Hey internet friends, do y'all remember the Ebola epidemic that struck Western Africa in 2014? The events of which played across television screens like some kind of reality TV show about the apocalypse. The media stuck to their usual script for the plague, using the name of a disease with no agreed upon cause or cure to embody the general public's greatest fear. And that fear manifested as panic. The powerful agent of disease was overshadowed by other agents of human tragedy like social collapse and war. Well, until now. This summer, the plague has been renewed for another season. Back for its 10th recorded outbreak in Africa, but this time in the war-torn Democratic Republic of Congo. As of today, August 23rd, 2018, 61 deaths have been attributed to Ebola, with an estimated 2,000 potential hosts having contact with victims. This season, Ebola is serving us a plot twist aggressive use of an experimental vaccine. However, before we all line up for our trial inoculations, why don't we first dabble in a bit of preventative alternative medicine? The kind that anyone can afford and certainly doesn't require a prescription. Let's examine the past, analyze the present, and prepare for the future by taking a critical look at not only the information being propagated this time around, but the information being suppressed about this virus. Let's discuss what the media won't tell us about Ebola. While some researchers have argued the plague of Athens that ended in 425 BC was an isolated Ebola epidemic, recorded history available for public consumption points to 1976 as the year the hemorrhagic fever was identified, named after the location around which it was discovered, the Ebola River in the DRC. Ebola translates to black, and this black fever is without a cause or a cure. Though scientists have named animals like bats and monkeys part of the Western African diet of bushmeat as carriers of the virus. Ebola is spread through bodily fluids, with victims presenting with nonspecific symptoms like that of the common flu. High fever, weakness, diarrhea, and vomiting, and when left untreated over the course of two weeks, the body breaks down, bleeding internally and externally, resulting in the gruesome and dramatic death associated with Ebola. A death that has been seared into the public imagination through mainstream media's efforts. A few tests for Ebola exist, but according to some experts in the field, these tests are not without their flaws in detecting the various strains of Ebola, which has led to skewed data reporting and attributing deaths to the virus's high fatality rate, with reports of up to 90% of infected humans dying within a couple of weeks. It's also important to note that the United States Department of Defense, as well as the Centers for Disease Control, classifies the Ebola virus as a biological warfare agent. The 1976 Ebola outbreak wasn't the first viral scare the world had seen, nor would it be the last. However, this outbreak inspired a number of novels, television programs, video games, and films, with storylines following easily spread germs and pandemics originating in places like China or Africa. Scenes of a single wet cough heard by every passenger aboard a too-crowded airplane bound for a densely populated destination like New York City are followed by apocalyptic images of a global population infected, dying with loved ones lost as the hysteria swells, and subsequently, scenes of public transport shut down martial law implemented, and the remaining survivors corralled into FEMA camps to duke it out over the last rations, all while a solution is being concocted, the distribution of which is debated. Should we pump it into the water supply like fluoride or make it mandatory for all to get jabbed? Well, either way, the most vital information in these programs and films is being relayed to the general public through familiar faces in the form of newscaster cameos. Making the lines between reality and fiction blurry for the viewer. Are these so-called journalists actually actors playing the role of journalists for their day jobs just like they're hired to do in the movies? For the last several decades, millions if not billions of dollars have been funneled into media programming surrounding diseases like Ebola. This programming follows the adventure and tragedy of searching for a lab-grown solution to a lab-grown problem, conditioning all who consume this type of entertainment to accept vaccines as the best solution to illness. But what happens when fiction becomes reality, and the images on the silver screen play out in real life? 
It's said that no one knows where Ebola skips off to during its respites, but in 2014, Ebola popped up for the ninth time in West Africa, dwarfing all previous outbreaks as it spread from Guinea to Liberia to Sierra Leone and beyond. With the World Health Organization, an arm of the global government called the United Nations, attributing over 11,000 deaths to Ebola from 2014 to 2016. In August of 2014, Liberia's largest newspaper shook up the Western narrative by publishing a series of articles, starting with a report that a man had been caught dumping formaldehyde into the local water supply. Even tiny doses of formaldehyde can cause Ebola-like symptoms when ingested. The man claimed to be one of many agents around the country. The newspaper also published reports of American Red Cross nurses injecting healthy individuals with Ebola vaccines, the trials of which were taking place during that time, and those individuals were the ones to die from Ebola symptoms. Other sources claim foreign humanitarian interventionists were reusing needles on patients who were already immune suppressed. The Western media responded to these allegations by labeling the Liberian journalists as conspiracy theorists, and a propaganda campaign was unleashed, featuring the Ebola is real slogan across clothing, signs, artwork, and even the title of a hit song. Meanwhile, around the clock Ebola coverage continued to play across the news. A scientist who originally identified the Ebola virus in 1976 called for quasi-military intervention to stop the epidemic from spreading in West Africa. And while President Obama sent 3,000 military personnel to Africa to work alongside the Bill Gates Foundation, as well as health workers from Britain, China, Cuba, and even Israel, Ebola left Africa and managed to make its way across the Atlantic, with some cases actually transported to the United States to receive treatment. This outbreak came only a few years after the CDC patented a strain of Ebola, which they reported was in an effort to keep the virus in the public domain, away from private companies seeking to make pharmaceutical dollars off of the hysteria. The media failed to mention any existing patents on Ebola in their coverage of the epidemic, just as they did with their coverage of the Zika virus, omitting any mention of the patent held by Rockefeller Medicine, dating all the way back to 1947. To include this data in any coverage of these viral outbreaks would educate the public on exactly who owns disease. Which might lead to a series of pesky questions beginning with, why are some diseases promoted while others are ignored? In 2012, 3 million Africans died from lower respiratory infections, diarrhea, stroke, and complications from the murky and controversial HIV virus. Do you recall around the clock coverage of those deaths? Any moral outcries for cures or solutions? No? That's because cleaning up contaminated water supplies and installing basic sanitation does not produce profit. Disease is a moneymaker. Medicine is a business that requires marketing in order to sell products and services. The media labels these products and services as the solution while ignoring environmental factors causing illness and death. If the media actually cared about African lives, then in addition to their Ebola coverage, they would run stories on African eugenics with Western Africa being used as both a testing ground for experimental medicine and a dumping ground for chemicals produced by global corporations. So now we arrive at the present. Ebola has resurfaced, claiming 61 lives this summer in the war-torn African state of DRC, with over 2,000 people feared to have come into contact with the virus. This time, health officials have an experimental vaccine that's been administered to over 2,000 health workers in Ebola patient contacts, but it's been reported that only 5,000 doses are still available. The vaccine was co-developed by Merck & Co., which is known as the world's oldest pharmaceutical company planting roots centuries ago in Germany, originally founded by the Merck family of bankers and industrialists. When World War I began, the United States division was seized by the US government for its ties to Germany. But Merck bounced back during World War II when the company president, George Merck, in tandem with running his pharmaceutical company, became a leader in the United States biological warfare program, involving the development of weapons which were tested on citizens without their informed consent, both at home and on foreign lands. Over the years, Merck has become one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies, and they've used their money and influence to lobby in Washington, D.C. Merck is the maker of the Vioxx drug and the Gardasil vaccine that resulted in scandals and lawsuits, revealing a laundry list of allegations among which included but were not limited to Merck's creation of a hit list of doctors who criticized Vioxx 
and the bribing of scientists and researchers to falsify their studies on the safety and effectiveness of Merck's vaccines. Right now, other pharmaceutical companies besides Merck are circling Western Africa like vultures. These companies have a similar history of scandals and lawsuits, none of which the media would ever dare mutter in their coverage of Ebola. The media would never tell you that the growing trend with these new vaccines is the alteration of the human genome, meaning that by receiving these inoculations, your DNA is being altered permanently, the effects and consequences of which have not been measured over the course of a human lifespan. And of course, this information is not being relayed to the human guinea pigs into which this experimental vaccine is being injected, a vaccine that the patient lined up for in response to the hysteria and panic of a potential viral outbreak. Science and technology is changing our world and our bodies at such a rapid pace. And this medicine that we were told would heal us is, in some cases, destroying us. But many of the valuable remnants of the past that we could learn from go unheard. And any real history fades as it's replaced by whatever is beneficial to this make-believe order that's been imposed globally. And these global corporations, like pharmaceutical companies, who our politicians bow down to for the right price, are they deserving of your blind trust? What have they done to earn it? The global government has demonstrated how little it values human life through endless war disguised as fighting for peace. In eugenics programs paraded as humanitarian efforts, confronted by any sort of imminent doomsday brought on by invisible germs, this government will seek the power to make medical decisions on the behalf of its citizens. And many will line up for a manufactured solution to a manufactured problem. Because the only thing that spreads faster than germs is fear. And that's exactly what the media won't tell you about Ebola. What do you think, internet friends? Let me know. You know I always look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye, make sure to wash your hands.